thoughtful and comforting. Those are the three words I would use to describe these rooms. Rooms that have been decorated in the Japandi style. Japandi is the union of the unique design styles, lifestyles, and aesthetic philosophies from Japan and Scandinavia. But these are geographies that are thousands of miles apart. Is it a simple coincidence that this fusion happened, or is something more interesting going on? And what does this design style look like today? That's what we're going to talk about. This is A Style Is Born, the show where we look at the furniture around us and the design styles that influence the ways we live. This show is brought to you by Wayfair. This story starts in 1853. For the 265 years before then, Japan was closed off to the rest of the world because of a policy they had called Sakoku. It meant that neither people nor goods could leave Japan or enter Japan, barring a few exceptions. And so that when this policy did end in around 1853, the world was flooded with Japanese culture, Japanese food, Japanese art, and Japanese influence. We know that Impressionists like Claude Monet and Mary Cassatt were completely enchanted and influenced by the Japanese art that was making its way into Europe. It was new and unique and different to what people in the West had been doing in the art world. And that's only one example of how the influence from Japan was changing and inspiring people in the West. So really that is how that first initial clashing of the two cultures happened. But it's really helpful if we zoom in on both cultures to see why maybe it is that they got along so well in this specific design aesthetic by looking at one cultural export that they both really have in common. Comfy living. In Japan, they have this term called wabi-sabi. It's a philosophy and perspective that encourages us to accept imperfection and impermanence. In Japan, this concept is applied to all aspects of life, which includes furniture. Stuff that has a scratch on it, a piece of dishware with a chip in it. Those are the natural signs of wear and tear that show when something is being used and loved and embraces that history. In Norway and Denmark, they have a term called huga. It doesn't have a direct English translation, but a pretty close one is cozy contentment. It is such a big word that in 2016, it was a finalist for Oxford Dictionary's Word of the Year. Huga embraces the soothing contentment of appreciating the little things, its simple sweetness, its making sure that you're living a life that is surrounded by and embraces comfort. Just like Wabi Sabi, it's a philosophy, but can also be used as a design tool. So you can imagine how these cultures, cultures that embrace Wabi Sabi, a culture that embraces Huga, how they could really fit together to create a design style that works beautifully. But they also have some key differences. Scandinavian design is more rustic and it's quite utilitarian. Cultures, of course, adapt to their climates. So you can imagine how these snowy northern cultures created cozy, rustic, practical interiors. Japanese design, on the other hand, is very delicate. It has a lot of details. Paper lamps, paper screens, and thin, intricately made furniture are some of the hallmarks. So you can kind of see how both the differences and the similarities have all worked together to create this unique fusion style Japandi. Japandi advocates for minimal homes that are clutter-free to reduce stress. They have deep reverence for cohabitation with nature, and they have a focus on beautifully crafted and carefully made furniture. So maybe I've convinced you that Japandi is beautiful and you wanna try incorporating it into your home or to know some of the hallmark signs of this design style so you can catch it when you're out and about. 
Here are some of the common elements of Japandi. Up first, blending exteriors and interiors. I'm sure you've seen these Japanese paper doors and walls before. They're called shoji. The reason that Japanese homes and Japanese interior design use these barriers instead of thick, opaque materials is to allow the thinnest barrier possible between the interior of a home and the nature outside. This is a tenet of Japandi design, trying to blend the boundary between the exterior and the interior. With that example, we can see some of the Japanese origins from that, but it's something that is embraced and loved by both cultures. The second common element is minimalism. Not exactly in the way that we've talked about in one of our other videos where we broke down minimalist style, but in the intentionality of the items that you have in your home. And because we're trying to, through Japandi, create extremely peaceful and tranquil spaces free of stress and free of clutter. Up next, earth tones. Embrace the calm of forests and natural landscapes by bringing those colors inside, aiming for colors that are calming, that mimic nature, and are muted to again lean into that tranquil vibe. I said vibe and I'll stand by it. This next one is one of my favorites. It's that everyday mundane items, things that are very utilitarian, can be a part of your design and can be beautiful. Brooms, baskets, scissors, they're all opportunities for beautiful, thoughtful, and useful design. And that takes us to our last point in my list, functionality. Part of the reason Japandi rooms feel so calm is because most of the items in the rooms are useful. Things are built with a purpose in mind and aren't there to be superfluous or particularly decorative. In Japan, they have this practice called kintsugi, a practice of fixing broken pottery with golden joinery. It means that the item can continue being used for a long time, show the history of its life, but also add beauty to that story. And in Scandinavia, well, functionalism is its own entire design and architecture movement. Bearing all of this history and these common elements in mind, let's look at a piece of furniture to pull it all together. Chochin, traditional Japanese paper lanterns, have captured our imagination for a long time. They have served a ceremonial purpose, a practical purpose, and an aesthetic purpose for almost a millennia. The earliest record of Chochin dates to 1085. They're traditionally made of a bamboo frame covered in a rice paper, paper, or silk covering. Historically and still today, they've been used to display family crests or names as signposts that were easy to spot. They're used to decorate shrines and other important places, but also to celebrate festivals and as signage outside of restaurants. Like we've discussed, Japandi is largely about comfort and calm. In Huge, you're encouraged to surround yourself with soft lighting, like candles and twinkle lights. In much of Scandinavia, especially during the winter months, there are only a few hours of light a day. And so you can imagine how much man-made light Harnessing light makes a difference to how these environments are curated. This tradition carries through into Japandi, where lighting is one of the best tools you can use to create a warm, natural environment. Many designers have been inspired by the Japanese chochin, and it's taken on a whole new life. In Japandi specifically, this blend of Scandinavian soft lighting and the Japanese use of paper lamps have blended to make this type of paper lamp really popular. And so the Chochin lamp has been this inspiration that now in Japandi design is being used in new and interesting ways. 
They have a lot of the Japendi hallmarks. They're made of natural materials, they have beautiful fragility, and they add texture to any room. And they show this really beautiful Japanese history, but also you can see some of why Scandinavian design would also be really into it. And so paper lamps are a perfect way to introduce light into a Japandi home. So there you have it. Now you know how these far away design styles that are quite different, but also quite similar from Scandinavia and from Japan have come together to make this beautiful design style called Japandi. Let me know down in the comments, do you think that you would want to live in a Japandi home or is it a style that you would want to incorporate into your house? Head over to Wayfair to discover Japandi style for yourself as well as tons of other styles and pieces. And make sure to join me next time for A Style is Born.